everyone. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 5. And it is here that we read perhaps Jesus' most famous teaching, which is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It's during this teaching that Jesus goes on to teach the Beatitudes, which is basically a list of ways that one will be blessed. It's here that he tells us to love our enemy. And later on, he goes on to teach the Lord's Prayer. And so the chapter begins with Jesus yet again being followed by a large crowd. And I want to point out that this crowd is not much unlike us today because the people who lived in that world, much like today, were people living in a world that was politically divided. There was racial tension, hate, intolerance. There was economic division, the have and the have nots. People in this crowd were ready to point their fingers to ensure that their voices were the loudest of them all. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? And so Jesus goes up on a mountain and he's surrounded by his disciples and by this crowd of people. And what follows is two chapters worth of Jesus's teachings where he spends time teaching us how to, li how to live a life that is full of love, of grace and wisdom a life where we learn what it means to follow Jesus and to become his servants. What Jesus does in this chapter is he makes it clear that following him means that you should have a life that is noticeably different than the life that society expects you to have. It's a life where our standard is one of selflessness and love. Because Jesus in this chapter tells us to love our enemy he says the ones who are blessed are actually the merciful and the meek. He tells us to turn the other cheek. But our world tells us the opposite because we are conditioned to get vindication over persecution instead of mercy to dole out punishment. We're told that instead of making peace to fight for freedom in order to get what you want. We're told that we are blessed if we have the big house go on the luxurious vacation, have the well-behaved children, the dream jobs, experience all of the success. But listen closely to who Jesus says is blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people rival you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. What Jesus means by blessed here isn't that we'll have what we want or that life will be easy. In fact, I just read a very unexpected lineup of those who will in fact be blessed. What Jesus is promising in these blessings is that we will be full of joy. That if we live a life where we are seeking out ways to serve the poor and to make peace and to be the one who is meek and full of mercy, we will experience joy, joy because it is true joy that comes from a life that isn't a self-centered life. A true blessing will come from a life where we are serving and following Jesus, where we have a relationship with our creator. And so in this world that is becoming increasingly more hateful and divided, it is in Matthew 5 that we are offered an anecdote. And so let's pray that as a community, we can be people who are seeking God and following after him. And let's ask that the Holy Spirit would fill us and work in us and through us to be the people um, that Christ calls us to be here in Matthew 5. Have a great day.